When BMW first launched the X5 back in 1998, it coined the term sports activity vehicle for its big 4x4. But forget famous five images of uber-keen youngsters dashing around the countryside. This big off-roader appeals to well-heeled families. It soon became a school-run favourite, and where I live, it still gives the previous generation Range Rover Sport a good run for its money. It's made all the usual changes. The X5 is bigger, more luxurious and more economical than before. But more interestingly, there are two firsts. There's a two-wheel drive version for the first time and a four-cylinder diesel engine. But you can't get the S-Drive 25D until the end of 2013. For now, it's just the bigger four-wheel drive diesels that are on offer. Ignoring the monstrously priced and thirsty V8 petrol that won't find its way onto many British drives, the daddy of the diesels is the M50D. It's powered by a 376 brake horsepower, three litre, six cylinder diesel engine, and it's got a three stage turbocharger. It's a lovely smooth engine, and if you can drive it gently, it should be reasonably economical. The official claim is 42.2 mpg, although we wouldn't expect to get that in real life. Find out how the previous X5 fared in our real life mpg tests by clicking the link. All wheel drive models now come with a 3D X drive display that gives real time details of body roll and pitch in the central information screen. And if you choose the M50D, there's plenty of performance on hand. This car will sprint past 60 miles an hour in 5 seconds flat. It weighs more than 2 tonnes, but on this M Sport equipped model you really don't notice it in the corners. You don't get too much road noise coming into the cabin, and surprisingly for a BMW, the ride does seem pretty compliant. At 650 litres, the boot is bigger than before. It opens and closes remotely. And it's got this useful flip-down section on the tailgate, so it's easier to load things. While BMW hasn't quite mastered the air of opulence you get in an Audi cabin, the X5's cabin is just fine. The front seats are massive, and the dash layout, with the four simple dials in front of the driver and the central screen, is really elegant. But even excluding the iDrive control system here, there are tons of other buttons around the cabin, so it's going to take some time to get used to it. BMW has gained pretty big improvements in fuel consumption and CO2 emissions across the range. All third generation X5s come with BMW's 8-speed automatic transmission as standard. It's a great piece of kit. You can choose to either amble along gently or hold onto the gears manually and really eat extra performance out of the engine. Diesel prices start just under 43,000 for the S-Drive 25D and go right up to just over 63,000 for the M50D. So, it all boils down to three things. Price, performance and looks. In the looks department, BMW has gone for evolution rather than revolution, so it may not be as appealing as something like the Range Rover Sport with its Evoque S look. But with the X5 starting at just under 43,000, it looks better than something like the Range Rover on price. And when it comes to performance, the BMW on first impressions does seem to have the edge, especially on the road.